something else that a question that I have that we didn't actually present you with, but I think you'll be fine answering it. Um, I, I'm curious about it's one of the many things I'm ignorant to, but I've got some friends who are in central southern Florida and their rut is they've got a rut in July. And I, what's the cause of that? Yep. Uh, as a matter of fact, I manage some merge in, in central South Florida. Uh, about July 15th is their rut. Uh, it, but in their season, they know. And they asked me if rat, I thought rattling would work in November. I said, I don't think so. Yeah. By then, got fawns <laughs> on the ground there. Uh, wind deer rut is a, is a real interesting story. It, it's all genetic. All these races of whitetails, which are because of the trans, uh, the translocation days, they're all screwed up, which there are places, especially in the South, where we have constant trickle ruts because the genetics is all so messed up. But each race of deer is genetically primed to breed at a certain time. And the reason in most cases that they breed when they do uh, relates to when they wean their fawns. You know, when a doe weans a fawn, it's on its own. And so food situation has to be really good. Now, the, uh, the dry time of the year uh, in Florida, it, it, their dry season is, is different from ours. It's in the winter. So you've got, you've got a problem there. And you also have, have a hurricane season. Now, in South Texas, uh, the deer breed pretty much around, and I'll talk about full moons in a minute, but they breed about on the full moon in, in December. And the reason that they do is the hurricane season is in August, early September. And that's when they get the majority of their rainfall. And after the rainfall comes, then you have, you have a green up period and it's perfect conditions for fawns when, uh, that are being weaned. Uh, in the Mississippi Delta, they breed late because you don't want to have fawns on the ground during the spring flooding season. So that's what's selected for them to breed in that, that late period of time also. Midwestern deer, I've, I've done, I don't know how many thousands of, of autopsies or necropsies on, on does in, in the Midwest. And, and you are, your deer would like to breed November 15th. Now, because the way the moon works, they'll, they will breed somewhere between the last week of October and the third week of November, depending on when the full moon is. Because the full moon is really what primes when deer breed. Not not when they're running or anything, but when they actually breed for some very complex reasons. But it, it's the full moon that primes it. To, you know, you got the harvest moon in September down in the Gulf Coast of Texas, the Avery Island whitetails, which go from about New Orleans all the way around. Corpus Christi, Texas, they breed in late September, early October. And so they breed, they prime on the harvest moon. Okay. Uh, the, the next moon, the moon in October, uh, a lot of, say, uh, east, a lot of the southern deer will be breeding on that, on that moon. But the next one, the beaver moon, is the one that, uh, that your deer would like to breed on. By the way, the moons the last two years have really been screwed up. And this coming year, we're going to have another blue moon in October, and you're going to have another one. Uh, all, of my, all of my fetal measurements for the Midwest showed that the deer rutted 10 days late in the Midwest last year. Interesting. Wow. That's, that's, that's incredible. That's so that was based off of necropsies that you performed? Yeah. Wow. See, we can take out the fetuses measure them and with 95 percent accuracy figure out when they were conceived that's incredible it's very cool <clears throat> very cool uh so how like what are the abilities of a doe or does in a small social population to, to synchronize estrus cycles like where i hunt i'm in east tennessee and the specific property that I spend most of my time hunting, it always seems the rut will be like a week and a half to two weeks different than my uncle's farm. That's five miles away. So is that an issue of specific social populations that are synchronizing their estrus cycle or what are your thoughts on that? That's probably going back to that stocking period. It'd be interesting to look at the stocking records 
for where those deer came from in that area. Uh, that has a lot to do with it. The other one is uh, when, what I gave you a while ago, when deer would like to do things, uh, deer that aren't in good physical condition are not going to do it like that. And we're seeing more and more around the country what we call trickle ruts, where the does that uh, are not, the doe is not going to breed until she gets back into good physical condition. The deer have to do things in a specific order. The does, they have to wean their fawns, they have to molt their summer coat, put on their fall coat, and that takes a whole lot of protein to do it, more than almost than growing fawns. And then and once they do that, they have to store, they obligatorily store fat in the fall. They've got to build back their reserves, then they rut. Now, if they have been in bad condition all summer, or even the ones that have, have nursed two fawns during the summer, they, they're going to have a tough time getting back into breeding condition in time for the, for the ideal uh, peak rut. So in, in herds that, that are overpopulated, what you'll have is you'll have a, a leapfrog effect where the does that lose their fawns because, uh, because they were bred at the wrong time or they're in poor nutritional condition, uh, they'll get in, in good condition real fast. They'll come into the fall and breed early. But those that actually had fawns, ironically, are not in good condition and they're going to breed late. So it's kind of a leapfrog, you know, with the dope doing well over each, you know, in alternating years. Wow. But those groups are highly genetically related. They are mothers, daughters, aunts, sisters. And a doe group will never let another doe in that group. And we've studied this for years and they will not let another and that relates to what I've been trying to preach for a long time about CWD management. But uh, so, and there's an alpha doe that runs every, she owns that place. And we've got some, because of improper doe harvest, we've got some geriatric does out there. We've got those that are 12, 15 years old. And, uh, and they, in like in Michigan, let's go back to Michigan. Michigan has been a stagnant deer herd forever. And, uh, there's some people up there that made their career studying a stagnant deer herd, and they think that the dogma there is that it, you have to have old does to have successful reproduction. Well, the only reason you do it is because the deer herd is in such horrible shape that only that it takes a doe forever to be able to carry off a fawn. Now, at Turtle Lake, we brought them down to three and a half. And we've got we've got a high percentage of our doe fawns breeding, and they're breeding actually early. Uh, all of them are breeding earlier than the, than the average for the state. So we like to have younger deer herds is what we like to have, not those old girls out there. Sure. <laughs> That's we an actually, interesting take. So we actually see when we hunt in North Dakota a lot, um, we'll see large groups of adult does. A lot of them won't even have fawns with them. You're saying that's kind of, that'd be the reason why? Right. Okay. Right. It's, uh, they're just, you know, they're old and they're overpopulated and they're, you know, those does are what, if you see a doe that, in the fall that doesn't come up with a fawn, she's an inert ingredient. She has not done her job. If, if I grew up in cattle business or ranching, and if we had a cow that couldn't pull off a calf, she got a free ride to town because she wasn't doing anything for us. So, you know, it, and hunters don't pay attention to those. They're just looking at bucks anyway. But but if you start looking at those doe groups and learning them, first of all, they'll make you a better hunter because you can follow them around and you'll find the bucks. But uh, you, you'll, you'll see that you've got, say, five does come up and you've got two fawns. Well, that's ridiculous. You should have, if you if you not, if 40% or more of your fawns do not live to be one year of age, it's mathematically impossible to have mature bucks. But there's a, this misconception, of what I call the old cow man. I've been told, lectured thousands of times over the years that, well, you only need one bull for 20 cows. Well, we're not raising calves, we're raising bucks. You know? And sure. that's nonsense. Bucks are geared to breed. They, they're, they're not geared to breed very many does. If they breed three or four a year, they've done done a pretty good job. 